as I said, Nigel Farage is in the studio listening to that. Nigel, uh, good morning. Last good time morning. you were here, um, you, you had some in-depth discussions, I believe, with at least one 16-year-old girl, and from that you concluded there was enmity uh, in parts of Peterborough, or mm. animosity, hatred. Well, uh, I didn't quite say hatred. Well, that's what enmity but, but, means, doesn't but, it? But, but, that, but, but tension, that, growing that, tension. That, that's the definition of know, that and word. And growing used. anger. Growing yes. anger. And it's not just Peterborough. Actually, I've been touring uh, the east of England the last couple of days. I was in Boston last night, some, and I, I, I met real anger there. And people saying to me that actually, uh, it's actually breeding a uh, very bad feeling. And the big problem is jobs. That really is, is at the absolute heart of this. Okay, we'll get to that in a second, but I, I, I'm interested how you, how you get to that from just a discussion with a 16-year-old girl in Peterborough. We've had no reports of hatred or animosity or we, 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 we've not reported on it at all, yet you found it just on a, a fleeting trip. It's amazing. Yeah, not just from one person, from dozens of people I spoke to. The case of a 16-year-old girl was where she was denied work because she couldn't speak Polish, which I was, I must say, very shocked by i now learn that this is actually quite commonplace um and that uh, british people are now being discriminated against in terms of getting jobs but uh, you know if you have if you have a managed migration policy it is not difficult to assimilate people through a community and for 50 60 years after the war that's what this country did do you really want any migration though does your party really want anybody coming to this country i want us to model ourselves on australia who say, if you've got a skill, we want it. If you've got a criminal record, we don't want you. If you've got a life-threatening disease, we don't want you. And we don't care what your colour is, we don't care what your religion is, but we invite you to come to Australia and become part of our Australian dream. And that's exactly what UKIP want. So if you've got a disease, you're not welcome? I'm sorry, if you're coming in here with a life-threatening disease or a form of TB that's untreatable, why on earth should the British taxpayer pick up the bill for that? We should be putting our own people first. Uh, are you just coming in stirring up trouble? Is that, is that, is that what you're doing? I mean, I, many people call you, you know, the Messiah. You know, many people say, oh, you know, they're going to solve all our ills, but I, I, instead of the Messiah, are you just not a very naughty boy? <laughs> well, what I want to do is to warn people that from the 1st of January next year, we're about to open our doors to 29 million people from even poorer countries. Countries that are effectively failed states. They're in the grip of organised crime. Poverty in Bulgaria is so bad that half the population cannot heat their homes. We're saying to them from next January, come here to work, but also, if you want, come here to claim benefits. And what are you, I are you find, saying 29 million people live in Bulgaria and Romania? Yes. Okay. And they're all going to come here, are they? I didn't say that. Oh. I said we're opening the doors to 29 million people. And we have no limit whether 50,000 come, 500,000 come, a million come. We have no limit. And that's the problem with this. And so what I'm saying is use, use your vote or whatever opportunity you can to tell the British government to say no. Enough is enough. We're quite happy to take skilled labour from Bulgaria and Romania, but nothing else. Would you send people back? You, no, I would only say... You, you're saying we've got a big migration problem already. We have. A lot of people are already here. A lot of people are already fitting in very nicely, thank you very much. Uh, you claim they're not. Uh, are there people that need to go back then? People who have got diseases? Well, well, do, well, I mean, well, 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 I mean for example, there, there have been in the Metropolitan Police area alone 27,000 arrests of Romanians over the course of the last few years. There is a big question, should should people who come here and commit crime be allowed to stay? And I think there's a very strong argument that says no, but people who've come here legally, under EU rules, we can't retrospectively say you're not welcome here, that would be wrong. If you're not stirring things up, why are you coming to Peterborough? There are no council elections here in May. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, there, there are in Cambridgeshire, there are in mm. Huntingdonshire, there are, you know, most of East Anglia why there are. Why Peterborough then? Well, because it's on the main road and I'm staying here. <laughs> it's as simple as that. All right, OK. I, 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 you've talked about, you know, doing deals with various various parties. You've talked about uh, who you wouldn't do deals with. Uh, would you do a deal with the Tories? My priority is not to do a deal. My priority is to build the UKIP brand. We've grown in the polls in the course of the last 18 months. Uh, we nearly won the Eastleigh by-election uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, we are fighting more council seats than we've ever fought up and down the length and breadth of this country. We're getting ready for a European election next year. You know, I'm not trying to pull the party backwards. I'm not trying to do deals with anybody. I want our agenda to succeed. Uh, can the public trust a man who, who draws an MEP salary but doesn't bother going to meetings? Can, can, can they trust that man to fix the country's ills? If we're not just talking about migration, can you be trusted to fix the economy, create new jobs, uh, get rid of the deficit? Well, one thing's for certain, we can't trust the lot we've got at the moment, because every single forecast they made two and a half years ago, they've missed by country mile. I am a member of the European Parliament, that's true. I spend more of my time campaigning in the United Kingdom mm. than attending dull committee meetings in 
Russell. Bit of coin, don't you? Just as Alex Salmond has done for 25 years in Westminster, just as the Irish nationalists did years and years ago. Does it make it right? Just as the Spanish separatists do in Madrid, there is a long history of people attending parliaments they'd rather not be part of. Yeah, does it make it right? Absolutely right, because if I wasn't there, somebody else would be there who would want to take Britain deeper into the European Union. Yeah, uh, Margaret Thatcher, of course, uh, famously, uh, was a, 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 a battler against and, and inside the EU, but she, she never wanted us to come out. Um, she did, in, fa- in, in really? her last book. Do you think In so? her last book, in her last book, it is absolutely explicit, and anybody that met uh, the Baroness in the last five years says she was totally clear Britain must get back its independence. So you're, you're, you're following Margaret Thatcher's legacy, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I'll let other people make their minds up on that. I was a Margaret Thatcher supporter. Um, I thought whilst the medicine was very unpleasant, she did the necessary things to modernise this country. So you can't possibly do a deal with Ed Miliband then, can you, or the Liberal Democrats? It doesn't if, look very likely, if, does it? If you're, if you're a, a flag waver for Margaret Thatcher, I, Nigel. I would have thought doing a deal with Ed Miliband uh, would, look, would, would, it, would appear to be an extremely difficult thing to do. Yeah, what would he have to do to convince you? Because, I mean, you know, the Tories are never going to do a deal with you, are they? Uh, not with this current regime. They can't stand us. They keep throwing abuse at us. Oh, you're waiting for Boris, are you? Uh, well, I don't know what's going to happen. All I do know is, the stronger UKIP get, the weaker David Cameron's position is. Yeah, uh, what, what's top of your empire? Say, say you're Prime Minister uh, in uh, a couple of years' time. What, what would be top of your empire? Would it be, you know, putting up the floodgates and stopping people coming in here? Or would it, would it be dealing with the deficit and... and, and and if not that, what? The first priority would be to get back control of our country. 75% of our laws are now made somewhere else. We can't control our borders. We don't regulate our small businesses. We don't control our fishing or farming. All of it is decided somewhere else. My priority is to get proper democracy back to this country. Where are you going today? Where can we see you today? Uh, well, I'm going to be in Northamptonshire, and then I'm going to be in um, on the Fens. I'm going to be in Ramsey, uh, where you have a very strong presence. Um, I'm then going further across, um, and I'm going to be in Holt in North Norfolk, and uh, we're covering some miles. What, what sort of reaction have you got so far? I can honestly, hand on heart, tell you that I started off near Penzance about ten days ago, and we worked our way up to Hadrian's Wall. We're now coming back down the eastern side, and everywhere we go, the response has been terrific. And the fascination of UKIP, this is the first time a UK political party has drawn its support from across the spectrum, across all the different classes. We pull as many Labour votes as we pull Tory votes, and it is a completely new political phenomenon. Not that many, though. Ten percent. Recent, what, Labour votes? Recent survey, you're at 10%, aren't you? Oh, what, nationally? Yeah. 17% in the Observer last Sunday, double the Lib Dems. Mm. YouGov put us on 10%. Do you know why? They don't include UKIP in the list of runners and riders. They say, how would you like to vote? Lib Dem, Labour, Tory, other. They don't even include us in the poll. So you're another. You're, you're a fad. Well, th- you? They would like us to be others. You're a fad, aren't you? The establishment would love us to be others, but the reality is, in election after election, at local and national level, we're doing better and better. Yeah. Uh, and what are people telling you as you go around the country? What are, what are they telling you of their worries, their policies? Because you've not mentioned the NHS in anything we've talked about this morning, which is a, is a big issue for a lot of people particularly well a people massive issue and, and, w- and why are we wasting billions of pounds a year on health tourism i mean i mentioned health earlier in this interview what are we doing we're letting in people with tuberculosis and severe diseases that are costing us tens of thousands of pounds we're a to welcoming keep. country Nigel. we're a welcoming country yeah. but there comes a point we look after people that, that's, that's well well if you followed that logic you'd say to the whole world anyone that wants to come can come it doesn't make sense there's a feeling that we don't dislike anybody but it's about time we started putting british people first Nigel Farage is the leader of UKIP, uh, live on the Bigger Breakfast Show this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank in. you. Really appreciate that. Uh, your thoughts.